Hello dear Toastmasters, welcome guests, friends. The topic of today's meeting will be time travel. You see, if you visited uh, meetings of club rather often, you find that very in, in many, many occasions we tend to talk about some travels, visiting other countries, meeting interesting people, but somehow I missed, maybe I missed it, but I never heard about traveling in time. So for the today meeting I decided to change, challenge us a little bit and uh, to have this topic. Time travel is not a new thing. So the first historic appearance of something related to time travel goes back to Indian, Indian Mahabharata. And these days we have very many movies, very many books, uh, TV series on this topic. The first uh, movie that comes into my mind with regards to time travel is actually Interstellar. If you haven't seen the movie, I urge you to, to watch it. It is very beautiful visually and it has quite a good scientific background behind the scenes. Speaking of science, contrary to public opinion, actually scientists do believe that time traveling is possible. At least traveling to the future. Let's speak about cosmonauts, for example, or astronauts. Sergei Krikalev, one of Russian cosmonauts, uh, spent 804 days in space. And since in space in the International State Space Station near the Earth. And when he traveled back, he actually find himself into the future. Because in space station, time flows a little slower because of less gravity and high velocities. So when he came back, he discovered that uh, everyone he knew were slightly older than him. 50 milliseconds, maybe it's not too much time, but nevertheless, for traveling back in time, it might be not that, not that feasible, unfortunately. But not all of the scientists are so pessimistic. Ten years ago, Stephen Hawking threw a party. He put some food on the table, put some glasses, put some champagne, uh, decorated the room with balls and uh, different things, put a bun huge banner with words on it and uh, waited. No one showed up, unfortunately. The thing is that he sent invitations only afterwards the event happened. The banner said, welcome time travelers. So no one actually showed up. <coughs> that doesn't uh, rule out the possibility of time travel back in time. I think if some civilizations in future, when they will discover time travel, may would like to fix this thing and in this case we will all know that time travel back in time is possible. But jokes aside, we have uh, a meeting for today and before we go to the main part which is prepared speeches, let me introduce the crew who will help the conducting of today's meeting who will help with our traveling forth in time, at least for one hour and thirty minutes. And uh, first, all of the crew members will be, of course, of course, Timer. Because Timer is the most important person for today. The one uh, who will check the position. So let me introduce on the stage Lina Trost. Toastmasters, my role as timer is to monitor in time during prepared speeches, table topics, and evaluations. In the end of the meeting, I will report the time of each speaker. This will let you know if you made your presentation within the allotted time frame. And I have special signals. I will show you green light when you reached your minimum time limit, yellow light which represents that only 30 seconds is left and the red light which means that your time limit is over 
And unless you have any hacks <laughs> and life hacks to hack the time, then please just uh, finish your speech and sit down. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. When you see ep epochs and multiple years passing by with a huge speed, it is hard to <coughs> not make uh, some very strange sounds. Ah, and oh, and maybe some, some additional sounds. I would argue that actually the one who tells the um, largest amount of the sounds enjoys the travel the most. But some might have another thing. Let me introduce to the stage Shibgenia, who is our country for today meeting. Hello, dear Toastmasters and guests. My role as a counter is to count unused sounds and uh, repetitive words that you are used in your speech. Uh, such words and sounds as a, a, and well would be counted. These are fillers that affect effectiveness of your speech. At the end of the meeting, I will be back at the stage and uh, deliver my report to you. Thank you. You see, before the meeting, I actually sent some emails with a short survey to the participants, participants of the meeting with a simple question, at which epoch would they like to travel if there is an opportunity to do so? And uh, for me it was a surprise because uh, all of the answers were completely different. So Evgenia, for example, was the single person who wanted <coughs> to visit the future in the first place. And uh, according to her, uh, uh, her wishes, she would like to visit the future in 200 years to see how would people evolve in terms of physical appearance and technology. And, uh, I would actually also visit the future to see such, to see the changes, but maybe 200 years would be too much for me at least. Next. In day-to-day -day life we see more and more tools and appliances, including home appliances, start to use uh, voice controls. So. You can, you can set a timer, you can set uh, an alarm, you can inquire Wikipedia by use of, of these tools. Maybe time machines of the future will also be able to receive commands. And in this case, the precision of our speech will definitely define the place and the time where we will go. So precision is important. And that is why we have uh, a special role for today's meeting, a grammarian, who will see, who will oversee the overall grammar performance. And Good day again. Today I'll be a grammarian, and if I notice some mispronunciations or poor grammatical constructions, I will deliver the meeting the feedback for you, so you know that you can improve in your language. Mm -hmm. So today we have a topic time travel and uh, the word of the day, words of the day, butterfly effects. I think all of you should have watched this movie with the same title. And it means that uh, there's a proverb that sounds like the flap of a butterfly's wings in the past can cause it another in the present or in the future. So this word means that something small events in the past can cause a vast Changes in future. So use it if you find your way. Thank you. And you know, additional curious fact about time travel. Action, actually, scientists did uh, man, manage to conduct an experiment, experiment, uh, experiment to understand whether it's, uh, time travel is possible, in addition to Stephen Hawking case. Uh, in one of the cases, they actually search, searched the messages in Twitter, famous social network, 
for the events who are discordant with the time of, of Twitter period. And as you may know, Twitter is different from any other social network in the terms that it doesn't allow to edit tweets. So it is the perfect tool to actually try to discover something going on not in accordance with its time. Unfortunately, they didn't uh, find any, any uh, cases of time traveling in Twitter feeds. So let me then Let me introduce our first speaker for today. Vadim Mikrin will tell us about the evil Google empire with his project number three, research and presenting in the pathway presentation mastery. Gentlemen, um, I think everybody in this room has a smartphone. And uh, just like me, you put a huge part of information about your life inside this small device. But uh, let's ask a question. Is it possible to trust a smartphone? Uh, and uh, cyber security specialists usually say no, you can't trust it. Uh, why? Because you know that actually your smartphone uh, is not yours. Partially, at least, at least uh, in part of operation system. It's owned by uh, the creator of this operation system. So it's Google or uh, Apple. And uh, the ultimate goal of all these companies is of course to earn money. And they see this little device as they is uh, their channel to sell you an additional services like an iTunes store or a, like a Google Play store where you buy uh, the applications and the share from the revenue from this application of one third is going to Google for example. And another business model of Google is of course to sell the advertisement and uh, more target uh, this advertisement, the more precious it can be um, crafted for every one of you, the more valuable this advertisement is. And uh, that's why Google wants to know basically everything about you. And you should view, view all the information which you put into, this, into your smartphone as information for Google or other application providers. And uh, now you can again ask, you, ask yourself about is it good to put all those photos, text messaging and online banking into this smartphone? And uh, is it possible for you to somehow use a smartphone without letting Google or uh, Apple to know all this information? Actually, the answer is partially yes. I've searched through some website uh, recommended by Edward Snowden. It's a famous whistleblower who ran from the United States ultimately to Russia from the FBI uh, for uh, which for, for uh, uh, the company he eventually worked on and. Uh, what I found. The first and uh, very simple thing that you can do is to go to privacy settings of your smartphone and turn off the uh, data, data collection. At least it's available in uh, Android smartphones. Of course this, this is not prevent, prevent Google to, uh, from, from collecting your data. But at least uh, somebody who eventually can get access to uh, your for example, Gmail and Box uh, will not see this information. For example, I personally know one, uh, one family who at the moment in a process of divorce only because of data they find in a, uh, in a collected location history of Google. You can also check if Google collects your uh, 
location history explicitly to go to the settings of uh, uh, Google Maps, even if you don't use it. And there you can find all, all the places when you visited before. And uh, uh, not, only, uh, not only places, but every movement you make. Uh, second place that you can actually find interesting information about you called My Activity page in the Google uh, privacy setting. So, second thing that you can do is to refuse <coughs> to use Google services. I mean, you can uh, not log into to Google account when you started to work with your smartphone. And uh, after that, you can delete and uh, not use all Google services such as YouTube, Google Maps, Gmail, and uh, so on. And third, and most hardcore thing that you can do, you can se uh, set up a special tweaked uh, firmware on your smartphone, at least it's possible with a Google smartphone, or even buy a special smartphone that with a pre-installed uh, securely version of uh, Android op operation system. But how we can live without all those uh, services from Google? At least we need the synchronization of our contacts, we need uh, email and so on. The applications for we buy a smartphone actually. Uh, it's possible uh, every, every of basic application has an alternative. For example, we can use another market uh, instead of, uh, for the application instead of Google market. Uh, one example of this is uh, Samsung market. Uh, Yandex also has one. And uh, to get feel what uh, alternative application is, you can, for example, use application called a new pipe. It's an uh, alternative application to use a YouTube. And it's more convenient and you can use uh, uh, YouTube without advertisements. And for example, you can use it um, as a background player, which basically a uh, basic YouTube application will not be allowed if you want to buy the premium subscription. <coughs> of course, it's uh, with another, uh, another tools like synchronizing the uh, edit group will be more or less convenient, but at least you will get a partially privacy. So, if you really value your information and your privacy, you can uh, go and uh, do these three things that I mentioned and uh, after that uh, you can drop using your smartphone at all. Thank you very much. I actually concur to you with most of, of your facts and, and your findings regarding the, the privacy of the devices. And by the way, Vadim, uh, in answer to my question, uh, answered that he would like to visit the golden era of, of ancient Egypt, <coughs> something around 1300 before the age of Christ, which I actually think is a very safe place, uh, safe of any smartphones. At least. Yeah. Let me introduce on the stage the second speaker for today. Ivan Shalev, who is the Inspire Your Audience project. Before we speak about time travel, let me bring you to the past. Well, actually, to the nearest past, because I'm speaking about uh, around one month ago, when we hit, had our New Year's Eve. And remember how cool it was? You were wearing your sweater with your ideas, and you were excited. You had in your mind all these wind of change blowing all around, you were waiting for some changes, for a new life from a blank sheet, right? You may, I'm sure that you remember all that. But according to the statistics, about 94% of today's audience, so everyone except one man, gave up on their New Year's resolution that you had put it down. Basically everyone. But why so? You were 
you were so excited. It was so, so <coughs> great for you to experience these this new beginnings. But we gave up. What happened? Why we gave up on, on, on a, bit, a better, uh, better, better life for ourselves? I know there's a saying. It says that if you want everything and immediately, you'll have nothing and little by little. So it's all about that. For example, let, uh, let's imagine that your goal was to get rid of 15 kilos. And I'm not saying that it's impossible to achieve, but let's be realistic. It's quite unlikely that in one year you'll achieve that. But it's possible, it's still possible. So I think that we, first of all, should be a little bit, a little bit more humble. We should, we should make more realistic goals. And instead of 15 kilo, let's put it 5 kilo. And when you'll achieve that, you'll be able to get to the next step. And then to the next step. And then to the next step, and so on. So every time when you'll reach a new goal, you'll get that extra energy that will propulse you further. So we should admit that our goals will take a little bit more time and a little bit more effort than we initially expected. And by only assuming that, we will be able, we will be prepared for new goals. We'll be prepared to uh, confront some new issues that we were not able after, otherwise. And there are two more things that hold us from reaching our goals, and we give up. These things are quite small, like that, and they live on your shoulders, on that one and on the right one. Uh, what, they look actually absolutely like you, but, so, but with some difference. A red one, a red version of you, is naked, it's, it has uh, small horns and a long tail, and it's your devil, the, the, the worst in your uh, the good side, the good guy, is wearing a white robe with all, all those angel wings, you know, and they both speak to you permanently. And classically, it is considered that uh, the good guy is telling you good things, the bad guy is telling you bad things. But I have a news for you because they both tell, are telling you horrible things. Because you can you can remember when you have a piece of pizza on the table, and the bad guy is telling you. Hey, take a look at that pizza, it looks so delicious, man. Just, 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 just try it. And forget about the gym, you just try it once and nothing will happen. And then you're, you're saying, like, okay, but just one. You take it, and then the good guy is coming in and he's starting, blame, starting to blame you. We were going to gym all this time and now you eat that goddamn pizza? Oh, really? And then you feel guilty, you feel yourself sorry, and you're the victim. So in my opinion, we lack some education for those two guys. So what I want you to do, so just take a piece of paper, divide it by half, and put down two things that will help you to progress. First of all, your fears, then your desires. What I mean? Uh, put down your fears in regards to what will happen if you won't reach your goal. All the, all the worst scenarios, for example, you will be sick, you will feel the lack of energy, uh, you won't be able to wear all the clothes that you were, would like to wear, and so on. So just all the things that will scare the hell out of you if you won't reach that goal. And that will be the script for the bad guy. Then you put down all your desires, I mean, all the best scenarios about how great you will feel when the goal will be achieved. I mean. Uh, You'll be healthy, you'll feel a lot of, a lot of energy if you lose those kilos. Uh, I don't know, you'll be able to buy any dress you would like. Well, not for guys, I'm sorry. Um, and so on. So, and when something, when you would like to give up, the bad guy will tell you this, this horrible story about why you should not give up. The good guy, in the same, uh, at the same time, will tell you why how, how cool it will be when you'll reach the goal. So one will push, other one, other will, will pull you. So this will be a tool for you. And I truly believe that we humans, we are the masterpiece of the nature. We are capable of unimaginable things. But we always forget about that. And because of that, we start doing a lot of shit to ourselves and to each other and to the outside world. But frankly speaking, my goal today is Today is to remind you about your New Year's resolution. I know that everyone has one, because <laughs> there is only one person in this room who didn't give up, and it's not me, frankly speaking. 
But I want you to remember your goals. Then go home, find that piece of paper, and take a look. Then divide it by half, or maybe maybe more. Just make it make it realistic, make it reasonable. Then admit that it will take, even after dividing it, it will take a little bit more efforts and more time. So be patient about that. And then put down all your reasons, all your fears, all your desires, why you want to achieve that goal. Those will be your two rockets engines that will propose you towards your goal. And I know that I can do that. I'm sure that if you think a little bit, you'll realize that you also can do that. So go again. Thank you. Ivan, by the way, was the only person I surveyed who decided not to go anywhere and to stay in the very same epoch we are living in. And uh, I can say I can concur with, with uh, this as well. Uh, I might be eager to visit other times, but probably for the stay, for, for living, I would stay in this period of history. Before we move to the next speaker, let me remind you that we have a couple of evaluation sheets on our desks. Uh, one is for evaluating certain and uh, con concrete speaker. Or you can use several of, the, of those to put some ideas for, for improvement and feedback for several speakers. And the second one for the members of Toastmasters to evaluate the meeting, every one of the participants and meeting as a whole. And now we are moving to the last speech for today. It is actually with the same purpose as the speech of one to inspire your audience. But it is, however, from the Competent Communicator Manual, project number 10, 10. Irmek Taktagov, luck takes, takes time. Hello, dear guests, dear Toastmasters, dear Mr. President, dear Mr. Toastmaster of today's meeting. We hear from time to time that somebody succeeded at something. One guy made million dollars, one actor won an Oscar. Many would, thought, would think that uh, he or she just got lucky. But what was before this luck? Roman philosopher Seneca said, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Let's talk about preparation and opportunity. The first is preparation. So again, let's go to the past. Uh, four days ago was February 2nd. Who knows what is celebrated on February 2nd? Nobody? Well, Groundhog Day. Uh, anybody, uh, did anybody see the uh, movie Groundhog Day? I guess uh, nobody. <laughs> well, I should cancel my speech. <laughs> because uh, I like this movie, and there are many interesting points in this movie. The main character of Bill Murray relives the same day over and over again. At the beginning, he just gave up. He didn't want to leave. This was the worst day in his life. By the end of the movie, we see that it is the exact same day, but probably this is the best day in his life. Only when he accepts what he only when he accepts his situation does he evolve. He worked with what he had at this moment. He uh, created his own uh, reality and tries to live this day to the fullest extent. He changed his negative expectations into positive ones. He believed that someday will come another day. And he used time effectively. He learned to play piano, even ice sculpting. He became a better caring person. 
And some of you might experience that one day looks like another day in our life. Home metro work, metro home. What if I had this time? I have mastered many things, but I don't have this time. I have many tasks and responsibilities. Home, metro work, metro home. Nothing can be changed. Home, metro work, metro home. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> you see, I, I had some acting classes to add drum. <laughs> so. Instead of living on autopilot, we can we create our own reality? At first, we need to appreciate what we have at hand right now. Look at the mirror, smile, and say, hey man, everything is not that bad. You are, you are not a refugee from Iraq. You have both legs, both hands. You have people who love you. And you love them. And you got a job. Everything is not bad. Then, by listening to your heart, you can understand what you want, what you really want in this life. By listening to people you value, you can get feedback and understand and get a clue what you are good at. Then, make small steps one after another. Because goal without action is just a dream. Yeah, talking about uh, New Year resolutions. Many people make New Year resolutions to achieve goals in one year in life and in career. But strategic goals takes time more than a year. To learn a new language, to become an excellent speaker, to master a new profession in a new area takes more than a year. If you think in the rest of a year you can make some changes, but if you think of three, <coughs> five or even ten years, you can change your life totally. You can become an excellent professional in a, in a totally different area uh, from what you have right now. So both being patient enough on the way to your goal, uh, accumulating power without getting much reward, but at the same time being present every day, feeling that you are alive every day, each and every day. Well, if you speak about how to achieve goals, here are some tools. Don't just set out outcome goals, set process goals. Outcome goal would be something like win a sport competition. The process goal would be go three times a week to the gym. Second, set the process goals into your calendar. And the rest of the process is easy. Just follow your calendar. Why it works? Because um, when you want to get something done, you have to devote energy and time. Typically, some other things must be sacrificed to make room to your new goals. And if you are forced to make sacrifice decisions every day, you will get tired of this decision making, sacrifice decision making. It takes too much energy. But if you use the secret of recurring uh, meetings in your calendar, you are just forced to, in advance uh, to make trade of decisions and just, just put your process goals in your calendar. In the end, talking about opportunities. An actor, as an actor Woody Allen said, 80% of success is showing up. The idea that success involved, that success, the majority of success involved just showing up seemed merely uh, merely showing up seemed um, overly simplistic and exaggeration. But think about it. If you, if you want to be a good athlete, just show up for practice. If you want to be a good parent, just show up when your kids uh, need you the most. If you want to be a good friend, just show up when your friend has a hard time. 
So I, I, in the in Toastmasters, I observed three ways of people who stop coming: uh, newcomers after icebreaker, and the third way is after getting CC level. Well, um, after ten speeches, you can become a good speaker, but not an excellent speaker. So um, just keep on coming. I've been not a very disciplined at visiting uh, meetings. But I just showed up for the humorous speech contest and surprisingly won it. <laughs> it, was, it was not an Oscar, but still I, I received a portion of uh, confidence and the, the feeling that I'm on the right path. So 80% of success is showing up, another 20 showing, showing, up, showing up prepared. So just keep on coming and do your homework and great opportunities will come to you. Thank you. Really inspiring speech and uh, I can say real working advices. So for example, putting something on a schedule can really work. At least work for me, I don't know. Speaking of the survey I took, uh, I asked uh, our participants to do, Yermek would like to visit the end of 19th century, century when the Industrial Revolution began and uh, sprawled and risen and every, ma not every, but many major changes in the culture and the hu history of European and US culture were initiated. So this is actually the end of the first part of our today meeting. I believe we travel safe to, to the break. The break will take 10 minutes and during these 10 minutes please feel free to enjoy water and bananas and some candies and some stuff. And if you still have time and wish, you may still uh, complete the evaluation sheets for the speakers. Thank you for your attention and uh, see you on the second half. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for, for, for getting back to your seats. So we are moving to the second part of for today's meeting, which is table topics, where we practice our impromptu speech skill, which I believe can be even more stressful, actually, well, at least for me. Nevertheless, we have an opportunity to do that, and uh, this is uh, one of, of rare opportunities in our every day, day to day life to practice impromptu speeches in front of an audience. Please uh, still remember about the evaluation sheets, evaluation for the meeting at all, about table topics, and uh, after the session of table topics, make sure to vote to the best of table topics speaker during our session. And uh, table topic session will be held by Christina. <coughs> Christina, welcome on stage. I enjoy every moment of my life, and I wouldn't like to change the epoch I live in. So I will definitely stay in mine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello everybody and let's talk a bit. So this is the session for improvisation where everybody can take part in. And today I will have only one question for any person who will take the stage. So actually, if you had an opportunity, where and when would you like to travel? In time. There, the time, or maybe the epoch, or maybe some very special period of time. And let's start with you on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's think, let's think about uh, what, will, what can make us in general to travel somewhere else. Uh, let's go to the uh, Middle Age. Yeah, they had a lot of disease. Not so much so. Uh, they had no television, internet. Uh, they uh, not, not so much su supermarket. So if you want to eat something, you should go and hunt it. Uh, if you go, if you go to another age, maybe other other ages 
didn't have a wheel in, like the Egyptians. So I think that today is the best time, and this is one of the not and uh, not bad. Not, uh, so the place is not bad at all. <laughs> Just don't get me wrong; it can be bad, but still. So uh, I wouldn't change, as I told to, to our Toastmasters, I wouldn't change the time when I'm leaving because I do believe that this is the time of the greatest opportunities, the greatest freedom, the greatest uh, and the easiest way to get any knowledge in the world. So the knowledge that should be persisted and hunted like a hundred years ago, you just Google it. So you can find any book, any language can be mastered. So today is the best place. Today is the best time actually and this is the best place. So thank you. We can see. Thank you. Change the question. <laughs> <laughs> but I can directly for you if you want. No, I don't. <laughs> okay, good evening, dear Toastmasters and dear guests. Thank you for the interesting question, Christina. You know, guys, my mom, uh, she really likes to travel by tram. But I want to go further and want to use underground subway train cabin. And once it happened with me that the driver invited me to his cabin. Yeah, but I was pretty young and stupid, and I uh, cancelled and his um, offer. But anyway, to be a little bit honest, I want to move and travel in time with butterfly effect back to let me say thousands, two thousands, and buy dollars <laughs> and then travel back. <laughs> This year, 2019, that's Zelda. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <coughs> so please share with us your point of view and please with my view. Thank you.
It's actually a pity that you were a bit late coming to the Toastmasters because we had a New Year party which was called the Rolling Twenties. Really? And it was yeah, and it was actually about the Rolling Twenties both in America, England and Europe. Yeah. But I just came like back to Moscow at, after the New Year's if so I couldn't have attended. Okay, so <laughs> maybe you will enjoy our next New Year party, right? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, so Igor, maybe you are ready to take the stage. Where would you like to travel and which epoch would you like to choose? Okay, uh, if uh, I would have an opportunity, uh, I would travel to 1960s or 70s uh, when uh, computer uh, technology, PC technology started to uh, uh, increase to develop uh, very uh, very quickly, quickly. So, and uh, I would like to meet with Bill Gates <laughs> <laughs> and maybe work uh, on uh, his company. Thank you. like to, to do. Um, personally, I um, like master, um, masteries very much. And uh, for me, it will be a great joy to travel through time to uh, and places. There are, for example, uh, the great pyramids of Egypt was built. And to see how they build it. Because we don't know exactly how, how it happened. Second, for, uh, second very interesting uh, time and place for me is uh, where, uh, the Master of uh, Atlantis uh, started and ended. And, uh, and finally, I would like to, it's not a master, but uh, I would like to visit the moment when, the, uh, when Gagarin flew to space just to see this glorious moment when the first man on the earth started his travel to space. Thank you. Take the stage. It's especially interesting for me to know where would you like to travel if you had this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello Toastmasters. I would not have this opportunity, I actually have this opportunity. Once I confessed in front of the Toastmasters audience uh, that I have, I'm ill, I'm drivaholic. And as all <coughs> people with holic fame, or they call themselves like an alcoholic, what they need is just a glass and a destination where they want to be drunk. What I need is a car and a city where I want to go. And that's what I do every year, almost uh, once in a month, taking, taking myself and my boyfriend in a car, pointing at some uh, city in the map, like five kilometers from Moscow, and going to this destination. Uh, this way uh, helped me to see uh, almost half of this country, and I also travel in past, because the, for the further you go from Moscow, <laughs> the more in the past you are, and sometimes you feel like you're a kid, and you grew up in that city like 30 years ago, because it seems so, so familiar to you. So that's my way to travel, uh, both geographically and in time. Thank you. Thank you. So Hello. Uh, I think the most interesting place to visit is the Greek or uh, Roman part. Uh, I wanted to be a warrior just to check myself, uh, but without the pain. Uh, and just to see this atmosphere, to see this crowd, this uh, uh, so many people looks like you fight and this I think the most exciting <coughs> atmosphere. So that's my, uh, my place to visit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, actually I had experienced uh, time travels just because I flew to Vladivostok and back. And you know it's around like seven hours of difference, so it's kind of time travel. But to be honest, I wish to travel to the future, 
take a look how people will live maybe after 100, 200, 300 years. And after that, please come back <laughs> to write a book <laughs> and to be a famous predictor or something like that. <laughs> so, thank you. Today everybody's ignoring me. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it, it's I'm required. Required. It's my responsibility. It's requirement sometimes is used, but not with you. Thank you. So actually I traveled, so to say, also to another airport because I was in Latin America. It was a seven hour difference, so it's quite a huge period of time. Okay, uh, do we still have time? Mm -hmm. No, we don't. Yeah, so the timer good. was the last person to take the stage, but not the least. Thank you a lot for participating so actively in the table topic session. And now I would like everybody to vote for the best table topic speaker. So we have had nine people. Let's remember Ivan, Maria, Irina, Veronika, Igor, Vadim, Valeria, George, and Lina. So please write the name of only one person and give these sheets of paper to Margarita. I'm already giving the stage back to the Toastmaster. Yeah? To Thank you, Stephen, for a great part. session, for great questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now let's meet and welcome Maria, who is the general evaluator and the host of the second part of the session. The evaluations. Dear guests and Toastmasters, one more time. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank you, Christina, for such a wonderful table topic session. And uh, moreover, let me say that maybe we have to turn back in time <laughs> and repeat it. <laughs> to support today's topic, uh, meeting, traveling in time, I would say <coughs> better than Groundhog Day movie can be only butterfly effect movie, I think so, or maybe biography. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, the meeting was amazing and uh, I also want to say thank you to you, Vladimir, for your Toastmasters great work. Your English and public skills are very confident and impressed. But let me notice one more thing, uh, that put a little bit more colors and smile in your public introductions and let me say, because you know that everyone uh, smiles in the same language so it can help you to uh, do your public speaking more colorful confident and maybe impressed but anyway it was really cool and you did your great job so uh it's my pleasure let me invite on the stage the first our personal evaluator for the first speaker for Vadim Nikrin, Tatiana Gladyshova. Tatiana, please invite on the stage. Dear fellow Toastmasters, yes, dear Vadim, I am going to evaluate you. I'm going to give fair evaluation for positive butterfly effect in the future. And I am starting my evaluation with praising you for a few things. First thing I would like to praise you is that you to give to let you know that you demonstrated a good product knowledge. So you definitely knew what you were talking about. So you did a good research, which I think was one of your objectives of your speech. Another thing I liked was a great eye contact. You definitely have uh, some experience talking with the audience, I think, maybe at work, maybe somewhere else that you are very much comfortable talking with people I see. Another thing, third thing I like, is that the thing I appreciate most of all, that you gave an explanation why Google wants to know where I am, what I do, that was very much logical, and that, for me, made all your project um, credible for me. So I trusted the rest of the information you provided. But one logical explanation made the rest of the information trustable. Now, a recommendation. First recommendation I would like to give you is try to avoid <laughs> assumptions. You started your project with... Most of you have uh, smartphones, how do you know? But most of us have 
smartphones. That in a, that this is an assumption. And I know nowadays we have a trend to get rid of smartphones. If you started your presentation, hey, guys, please raise your hand, hands, those of you who do have smartphones. You first, you make the audience involved in your project, you keep the audience awake. And second, it's, um, it, it's you know for sure who, who has smartphone, who doesn't. Another thing I would like to uh, recommend you is add some humor, add some spice to your stories. For example, you, uh, personal stories. You mentioned a couple who is in the process of divorce, piece of cake. If you add some spices, some appropriate but spicy details, you, may, you could have made it, made it as a blast, as a piece of cake in your project. Another thing, you used some terms I wasn't familiar with. I'm very much old school, I don't use gadgets often, so I, met, I, I heard a few terms, I, I don't know what I, I have no idea what, what they are about. So make sure you, all your terms are adjusted to the white audience. And um, add some enthusiasm, add some voice, uh, use your voice to divide your stories into parts. And it makes it structurized and better listenable way. Overall, that was a great project and I wish you luck and I'm looking forward to your next project. Thank you. Really uh, good report and feedback. I think that it is really good and recommendations. And uh, let me say that um, divorce is not for kind of spicy humor. It and could it have been. been. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so guys, you see that enthusiasm and humor is all about those masters. So Nikolai, let me offer. Maybe we have to invite uh, and uh, for welcoming uh, guests and those masters. Maybe not with Sito Stochny, or maybe with a kind of prosecco to be more enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> Let's make those busters great again. <laughs> And let me invite on the stage the second uh, personal waiter for the second speaker, Ivan Shelayev. Please, Valeria Kolatkova, personal waiter for Ivan Shelayev for his speech return. <laughs> dear, dear guests, dear Ivan, what can I say based on what I heard from the stage tonight? I have to say, I have to admit, that you're a great entertainer. Why can I say that? Because I loved many things, how you delivered your speech. First thing, that I loved the energy and how engaging you were in this stage. You actually made your speech contagious, uh, filled with the humor, uh, very witty humor by the way, it's a good sign, you could be a great comedian, great, very bright metaphors, based on what I remember, was the rockets, uh, rocket engines, angels and devils. It was very picturesque, very colorful. And I thoroughly enjoyed your stage presence. What I mean by stage presence is your movements, your posture, and your gestures. And I specifically want to comment on the gestures you have because they were really wide, I would say a wide collection of gestures that you may want to uh, take from Ivan to incorporate in your speech. You even jumped over there and that was a great, a great presence, stage presence. And uh, I also like the voice and the role playing that you made. The dialogues with this, you know, uh, talking to angels and devils, uh, arguing, then winning something uh, and so on and so forth. So these are your very, very strong points. However, and I also, I also found the golden nugget. The idea that you put in your speech, which was probably one of the most important part speech, right? The golden nugget of your speech was uh, set realistic goals and uh, get them done by using specific techniques. That's what I learned really, really well. But, there is one but. It was supposed to be not an entertaining, not only an entertaining and uh, engaging speech. It had to be an inspiring speech, which is probably the hardest task that a Toastmaster may have on the stage. As an inspirer, and as an inspirer, not an entertainer, your main task is to find this golden nugget 
the seed, the idea that you had in your speech and plant it into a soil of our hearts and brains so that we follow this idea with you together. The problem that you had is that you had the, the idea, you had the seed, but the soil was not fertilized. We were not ready. Why can I say that? And why I would say it was not a success? Three reasons. First, you didn't, you didn't find out the needs of the audience. You didn't know what we wanted. You put some statistics, but statistics is not people, it's not us. Ask us and interact with us. Probably I don't have this problem. Probably I don't need this decision. I don't, I don't, I don't need this solution that you propose to me. Learn more about us. Interact. Ask people. The second thing, you didn't connect it to us emotionally really well. You didn't build a very good rapport and that is the, the, the sequence from the first problem. Talk to us. Find the problem. Find the need and solve it. And the third thing, I want you to be eternally consistent with your message and the topic of the speech. Return to work is not inspiring at all, Ivan. <laughs> so, to summarize my evaluation, you're a great entertainer, but I want you to keep building your um, speeches here on this stage, so please work more on inspiration, interaction, and talking to people. Thank you. Everything I can say, but dear Lera, don't forget about the time. Yes, yes, it was a red light, you know. So put more attention on time. And I also like a voice, Lera. Sometimes it helps to say something. And so Ivan, find the golden nugget. I hope that you do it, not in McDonald's. And let me write on the stage. A personal evaluator for the second speech of Ermek Tartagulov, uh, Nikolai Denisenko. Please welcome on the stage, Nikolai. Thank you, Masha. Yes. Dear Toastmasters, dear uh, guests, dear Ermek. Today we are lucky we have uh, two inspiring speeches, right? It's, uh, uh, I would say, uh, inspiration, as Lera <coughs> rightly mentioned one of the most difficult projects within the Toastmasters because we have to really into the, move enthusiasm to, to the audience. What I like about your speech, uh, Yermak, definitely, you, uh, you need emotional connection with the audience. I, I like your you know, drama thing, uh, your talk to Miro. Uh, I saw reaction of the audience uh, that was positive. Uh, that was good. Uh, selection, I mean, mentioning uh, the uh, great movie, that was very good because uh, uh, all of us, we are, we were in a situations when we have home metro work, home metro work, this kind of circle repeating every <coughs> time. So, such kind of drama you expressed correctly and I think uh, you had connection with the audience in terms of the, uh, in terms of that thing. However, a uh, few options uh, uh, for improvement I see here, Mac. Uh, on technical item, on technical thing, I think it would be good to uh, to re reduce using notes because at your uh, speech number ten, uh, it's it's uh, something which you need to reduce. Uh, the other technical thing in terms of the uh, speech. It's better to use pauses when you have a quotation uh, from someone. Not not immediately go further because uh, uh, otherwise we don't have uh, enough time to think about. Uh, that's minor thing. Uh, but uh, more items I, I have in terms of the content because um, you know inspiration. It is uh, it is indeed a difficult thing because we need to believe what you said. We need to inspire him, really. Uh, uh, what's, what's the main idea? The idea was uh, uh, to use uh, the process goals in your calendar to repeat and improve things. But actually, uh, that's not really inspiring, I think, uh, uh, because it, it's more kind of informative uh, thing, but not something which we really can 
uh, uh, use for improvement. Uh, my recommendation would be to use more personal stories because you had a great stories where you, you really moved something thanks to something you know which you can share with all of us. You, had a, you are the winner of the conference of Toastmasters. Your journey or something you can explain, how did you do it? Because it it's, it's would be really great. Uh, more personal examples uh, uh, would be good, and the selection of that, the, real, the great idea for inspiration, which is touching for everyone, that would be uh, you know, my recommendation. Overall, I like the speech, but uh, for the project number 10, uh, I would expect from you as a, as a great to uh, speaker, and you have your personal style, you have a great sense of humor, I would expect more, Yermek. Uh, it's I would I would leave it up to you to either repeat it or not. So it's uh, for your for your judgment, uh, because it's my personal opinion, Yermek. It's uh, it's not uh, something which uh, which is must. Okay. Thank you very much. Again, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, your next speeches. So. Well, report and thank you for your personal opinion and it makes you exactly personal related for Mac. Anyway, Mac it was really interesting to listen to your speech, but I think that you have to put attention on Nikolai's advices. Uh, so guys, we are moving to our next part for reports of our uh, persons who did their minor roles reports. And the first person is Lina Droist. Uh, please uh, invite on the stage. Let me invite on the stage our timer. Please her report. Dear Toastmaster, compared to time, almost everything was perfect. Uh, I would like to say to some <coughs> table topic speakers that you can take even a little bit more time to say more words, your ideas, and so on. Uh, however, some people were not our big talk, <laughs> and I would like to say, Vadim, uh, you expanded your speech for 15 seconds. It's not a crime, but still, <laughs> you can work on it. I believe in you. <laughs> uh, also, I would like to ask Valeria for the same, <laughs> and Nikolai. <laughs> um, even with all my respect, <laughs> I would like to ask you to to take your time a little shorter because it was like one minute more. Um, and to Ermek, you could tell us even more details because you just reached your minimum time limit. You had two minutes more. So, thanks, guys. With all your respect, you can do it only for the president. For other speakers, you can use less. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much for a good job. You did your best for a well introduction of signals, well usage of signals, so everything was pretty good. And uh, let me say one more time, thank you very much. Let me invite on the stage our uh, second person, the, our accounter, Evgenia Pajankova. Dear Toastmasters, I want to deliver my report and I want to mention, first of all, uh, our, I would say, winners, uh, which speeches uh, were really good. Uh, they are Valeria Holodkova, uh, Maria Kalimkina and uh, Christina. Uh, after that, uh, I will start uh, from Vladimir. Uh, and I want to mention that uh, when you read, uh, you use unless less uh, sounds. And uh, maybe when you're looking uh, for some name or some information, you could simply replace it uh, by some prepared words, uh, like, let me find this in my list. Uh, uh, let's uh, go to our speakers. Uh, first of all, I'll start from uh, Vadim. 
Uh, Vadim, you are the leader of today's uh, speeches. Uh, it's 30 unused words. And uh, by the way, uh, in table topics, uh, it was only one. So in prompt speeches are uh, really better. Maybe you need not. Maybe you need not to be so good in memorized speeches. And uh, Ivan, the opposite situation. Only one in prepared speech and nine in improved speeches. Ermek, uh, 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 it was 11 uh, news sounds uh, and uh, I want to mention that all of them were at the end of your speech. So maybe the first part was really good prepared and the last one was not. And uh, uh, Igor, uh, in your table topic speech uh, spe you used a lot of useless uh, sounds, so please take care. Thank you. Masters and guests, can you imagine how difficult it is to count sounds? So thank you very much. Your report is very good and confident. In my vision, it is the best way to explain our sounds and it is exactly how to be an account. Let me invite to the stage the third person of our minor roles, the grammarian and word master, uh, Artur. Never mind. First of all, uh, Vadim, thank you very much for the interesting project. This was really interesting and exciting, you know, for me. But I found small mispronunciation, synchronizing. I think synchronizing is a more appropriate and better word. Then, uh, without letting Google to know about your life, so if I'm correct, uh, we don't need particle 2 here in this construction, so without letting Google know about your life and personal data, it will be better choice to use. Everything else was perfect. Then, Hermia, uh, your project was also very interesting, and well, not just inspiring, but when you was telling us, were telling us about Bill Murray hero, the situation does he involved? I think we don't need does he the situation he involved. You know? So then uh, by listening, <coughs> by listening to your heart, it will, uh, will let you know what you really want. So I think it should, she should have used Jeremy here by listening to your heart. I think you mentioned this. I think you know all these rules, with the way rules, you just you did these mistakes because of some kind of university. Maria. Maria, so when you were telling about subway, subway train driver, he invited you into his cabin, but you cancelled his offer. I think if you, if you told us you declined his offer, it, was, it would be a better, better choice to use. When you declined his offer. Yes. <laughs> then, uh, but I would like to pay, pay your attention on how Ivan used some you know, some uh, interesting phrases to get rid of 15 kilos, you know. I think this structure to get rid of is very interesting and it's really very vivid to, uh, to use in your speech. So thank you. And the second word, propose your further. So propose is a very rare word that someone use, uses. So not push, not um, push your and so on. Propose is a very good word, thank you. Then, uh, the Maria, the Maria, <laughs> the only one Maria, was the only person who used the word of the day. So special thanks to her. So let's give a portion of applause to Maria. Thank you for the meeting and the good evening. It was a really good job. And in any case, my feedback should be positive. <laughs> but let me say that the grammarian and wordmaster role is really important for English public speaking club. And when you use something like butterfly effect or let me say that it should be possible that we uh, don't have <coughs> some persons who have never seen this movie. So it's not exactly the best explanation for this word. You should introduce the word 
this explanation in English to understand what does it mean. So it will be better. And uh, for when you introduce your role like a grammarian, it's, it, it also should not be like a one sentence. You should also uh, say more that people who, for example, come for the first time, came for the first time here, they have to understand exactly what is your role and what will you do. So, but anyway, let me thank you from the Maria. Yes. <laughs> all my respect. Okay, guys, it was a meeting. It is, I hope that it was a really interesting meeting for all of us. I really enjoyed it and thank you very much for the wonderful topic and uh, thanks for all the speakers, personal relators and uh, all the people that came uh, today for the meeting and Nikolai. Also my advice like, from the general relator, think about the uh, to change a little bit of champagne or something like that to make our speeches more enthusiastic and confident. Thank you very much, guys. Let me invite to the station. President Nikolai Dimitrenko.